Hey everyone, it's Johnny here and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be looking at a typical bearings question that you may face in an exam and I'm going to be taking you step by step through the process of working it out. But before I do that, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell as well so you are notified of all of our new releases. Okay, so when dealing with a bearings question, before I even read through this question, just remember the key acronym here that we've come up with, a mnemonic, a way of remembering the key things that you need to do for every bearings question, which is remember 3D or triple D or the three Ds, okay? So the three Ds are the guiding principles for any bearings question. The first D means diagram. So remember, when you do any bearings question, you always draw a big diagram showing all of the details, exaggerating the size of the angles so that you don't end up cramming all of the numbers in and getting confused, okay? And you make sure that when you start drawing the diagram, when you draw the first point, you don't do it in the corner of the page because then you might run out of room in that section. The second D is directions or direction lines, okay? And what we mean by that, it's just a way of making it fit with the three Ds here, but it's the north, south, east, west lines, okay? So at every point that you draw on the diagram, making sure you then draw a vertical line through it and a horizontal line through the point to represent north, south, and east, west directions, okay? You do that at every single point that is on your diagram. That's going to make it easier for you to fill in all of the relevant angles in the diagram and therefore will make it easier for you to solve the question. The third D represents details. You want to fill in the diagram with as many details as you can beyond what is provided in the question. So of course you've got to use all of the key numbers and the key information in the question first, but then make sure that you go and use that information to fill in even more details if possible. Because the chances are by filling in the diagram as well as you can using that information that that is then going to be useful and you can actually use that to get to the answer. Okay, so keep those three Ds in mind. Let's have a look at this question. Adam travels 10 kilometers from his house. So that's where he starts. So starting point, remember I don't do it up in the corner. Starting point is A. And remember at any point that I put on my diagram, I'm immediately going to draw my north, south, east, west lines, north, east, south, and west. And remember that north is zero degrees. If we were to go east, that would be 90 degrees. You don't have to actually draw these in if you understand this. South would be 180 degrees. West would be 270. And if you went all the way around, of course, it would take you back up to 360 degrees back in the north direction but north, of course, is also zero degrees. So north is zero and 360. It's a full revolution. And just remember that when you actually move in the direction that it says to go, so on a bearing of 120, we are going in a clockwise direction from this north line. Okay, so that's, here's our starting point at A. It then says Adam travels 10 kilometers from that point to Blake's house on a bearing of 120 degrees. So don't worry about the 10 kilometers yet. We first of all want to figure out what direction we're going to draw the line in to basically map the direction that he took to go to Blake's house. Okay, so he went on a bearing of 120 degrees. Remember, when it says 120, it means 120 from the north direction. And that's why we have drawn in our direction lines here. So if he has gone on a bearing of 120 degrees, that's obviously more than 90 degrees. So we, But it's less than 180 degrees. So it's between these two lines, okay? So we can roughly just estimate. It doesn't have to be exact, of course. Just estimate. Don't draw it too close to either of the lines because otherwise you'll find it hard to write in the smaller angles there. And remember, we want a nice big diagram so it's easy to see everything. Okay, and we'll say that that is Blake's house here. So again, don't do the diagram too small. Once we're at this point here, we want to represent this with B for Blake. Always important to just give a letter there so it's easy for you to read your diagram. And remember, as soon as you do a point, draw the north, south, east, west lines, okay? You don't have to even put the north here, that north direction. You don't have to write any of that in. It's just important you do that and understand that they are the north, south, east, west directions. 
okay, we also want to fill in clearly here that we have gone 10 kilometers. So I'll put 10 because travel 10 kilometers. And importantly, we need to use, remember details now, details every time we read a new sentence, 120 degrees from this north direction would mean that we traveled 90 degrees plus another 30 degrees. So always work out those smaller angles relative to 90, 180, and 270, whatever's relevant. So in this case, because we went 120 degrees, the relevant angle to then fill in, and this is what I was talking about with details, is 30 degrees because 120 take away 90 is 30. So see, we can fill in the 30 degree angle there. Because we filled that in with 30 degrees and because this angle here, this angle here, I'll just show you, in green, where I've got those two green lines, that angle there is 90 degrees. Obviously, the angle between east and south is 90, right? It's 90, so I'll put a box there. That means that this angle here is 60 degrees because 60 plus 30 is 90. So this is what I mean by filling in all possible angles. What I can then do, and this is it's really important that you understand the relationships that emerge when you have parallel lines. And this is why we actually do north, south, east, west lines because you actually create these parallel lines. Have a look at these parallel lines here. Those lines are parallel to each other, which means that if you can see here, a Z shape is formed. Okay, a Z shape is formed with this 30 degree angle here. See where the 30 de degree is here. See how there's a Z that appears here, that means that these angles are called alternate angles. They are called alternate angles because there are parallel lines and alternate angles are equal. Okay, so with bearing questions, you'll often see alternate angles emerge. So I know if that's 30 degrees, this is 30 degrees. By the same token, if that's 60 degrees here, there's a Z relationship here with these angles, or you could just subtract it from 90 again, like we did before, and you'll find that this is 60 degrees because of course, this whole thing has to be 90. So just like that, I'm doing the details step here after doing a big diagram and showing all the directions at the points. Let's move to our third point here. So he then travels 16 kilometers due north. He did travel 10 this way, so I'm going to make the 16. And due north, by the way, just means directly up along the north line. I know we've already drawn these north, south, east, west lines, but now we're going to continue that north line longer because that's actually the direction we went. So because 16 is longer than 10, I'll just exaggerate it. I'll make it even longer here just so we don't get confused and think that this is horizontal. And I'll connect up. Important to connect the final two dots as well. So what I've done is I've Gone, we've gone 16 kilometers directly north, so there's no angle to fill out there. And because this is a new point, hopefully you guessed it, we have to do, that's, that's point C there, we have to do our north, south, east, west lines. And you'll notice that the south line intersects directly with the north line, of course, because they're on the same vertical line. Okay, great. So can we fill in any more details? Well, we filled in the 16. We know we went due north, so there's no angle to fill in there. We've got the 60 degree here. Perfect. The question then becomes, what's the question asking us to find? How far is Adam, Adam's currently at point C, remember, from his house over here? So it's important to label the side you're trying to find. We're trying to find X. Okay, now when, you need a, when you're going to find X, the question then is, well, have a look at the triangle that we have. We have a triangle. You ask yourself, what type of triangle do we have? Is it a right-angled or non-right-angled triangle? And here, I can't see any 90-degree angles within this triangle. Okay, so yes, there's a 90-degree there I wrote to represent the east direction, but that's not to say that this angle here is 90 degrees. Okay, we actually don't know this exact angle. We know that this little part here is 30 degrees, but I don't know this other little part, and we don't need to, okay? You, if you, you could find that, using the sine rule or cosine rule, but we will have enough information here, as you'll see, to still get the answer without it. All right, so what you can sometimes do, I'll just add this as well. If you find that it's there's a lot of details filled in here and it's all getting confusing, then what you can do is you can extract out the triangle and just redraw it, okay? So I'll redraw the triangle that we're looking at to hopefully make it clearer for you. 
So I'm taking out the triangle from in here. This is sometimes useful and just going to fill in the information I have because then it might allow you to see it a little bit clearer. So see how the 16 is this line, the 10 is this line, I've drawn that in. We don't know that and I don't know this full angle so I'm not going to fill that in. So there's the information I have and I'm trying to find X. Well, sometimes that can make it a lot easier to see what you need to do. So we have a non-right angled triangle. So it's not right angled. So we don't use Sokar Toa and we can't use Pythag. Okay, it's not right angled. So what we use, the first thing I always consider is the sine rule. Can we use the sine rule? Well, the test for using the sine rule is can you draw an X with two pairs of angles and sides? So obviously you can see here, the 60 degree matches up with the X and then I would need either the 10 or the 16 to match up with an opposite angle. I need one of these angles, but I don't know either of those two angles. So I can't use the sine rule. Again, if you had one of these angles, you could draw a line to match it up. It would create an X within the triangle, which means use the sine rule. Because that didn't work, we have a look for the cosine rule. Can we use the cosine rule? And the test for the cosine rule, you actually want to look for the shape V. Okay, so see if you have two sides with an angle in between it. Well, we have 10, have a look at this, and we have 16, and we have the angle in between. So they're the requirements. See how there's a V shape with all the information included around that V and within that V? That means you've got enough information to use the sine rule to help you find the missing side over here. So we're going to use the sine rule. Okay, let's apply the uh, sorry, we're going to so we're going to use the cosine rule. Let's apply the cosine rule here. Remember the cosine rule is that a missing side if you're trying to find a side c squared, it's going to equal the other two sides, the square of the other two sides added together, so a squared plus b squared. Just think of Pythag if you're trying to remember the start of the cosine rule because it looks exactly the same as the Pythagoras theorem. Okay, so a squared plus b squared minus, this is the extra bit, minus 2ab cos c. And cos c just represents the angle that is opposite the side you're trying to find. So 60 degrees in this case because it's opposite to x, which we're trying to find. Now we fill in the information. Well, our c, the missing side is x squared. So x squared equals 10 squared plus 16 squared minus 2 times 10 times 16. Now, because there's a minus and then there's all of these timeses, I'm just going to put it in a bracket. It can make it easier. Try and do that in your calculator as well. 2 times 16 times 10 times cos of 60 degrees. Okay, great. If we put all of that into our calculator, let me just see here, then we're going to end up with 356 for these two parts minus, and then the inside of that bracket would be 160. So then we're going to get 196. Now, 196 is not the final answer, is it? Because that has only given us x squared. I want to find x. We don't currently know the length. We just know what the length squared is. So how do you get rid of the squared? Well, the opposite of squared is square root. So that would cancel that out. And what you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So the square root of 196 is going to be our answer. So we're going to get X is equal to 14, which is a nice answer. And we'll make sure we'll put in the kilometers, put it in terms of the question. There is your final answer. That is how you answer step-by-step step a bearings question of this kind. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, make sure you hit the subscribe button and I will see you in the next video.